I'm showing here the code that we have written in the last video, connecting and setting up a camera. In this video, we're going to see how to find the location of an object based on its color. To begin with, let's do some investigation as to what this variable image holds. We know it is a picture, but it's also a mathematical kind of a thing. Let's see what it is mathematically. I'm going to start by running this code. We get a live image and then a single image capture. This is showing the variable image. Let's take a look at what image actually is. In the command window, if you type in the word image and hit enter, it will tell you what numbers are being stored in the variable image. Image is storing a lot of numbers. Take a look through the numbers that we see and see if you can tell any kind of a pattern to these numbers. You should notice as you scroll through here that the numbers are limited to being between the values 0 and 255. Here we found some zeros. Most of the numbers are right in the middle of the range. We see more low values than we do high values, but all of the numbers range between 0 and 255. The reason why the numbers vary between 0 and 255 is because this image is being stored with an 8-bit depth. If we take 2 to the power of 8, we get 256, and then if we subtract 1, we get 255, and that's the largest number that we can represent with an 8-bit value. Now, how many numbers do you think are being stored in image? We can see that it's a lot of numbers, but we can also tell exactly how many numbers there are. That will give us some insight as to what image is. If we type in size image and hit enter, this is telling us that the variable image has 480 rows, 640 columns, and three layers. So if we go back and look at the actual image, this image has 480 rows, 640 columns, and then three layers stacked on top of each other. The 480 and 640 are the pixel resolution of the image. If you recall, back when we specified the format of the camera, we said that this was going to be a 640 by 480 image. We have one number inside of the image variable for each pixel, and we have an image that is 640 by 480 pixels, so that's why we have 480 rows and 640 columns. Do you know what these three layers are for? Each layer here is for a different color. We have a red layer, a green layer, and a blue layer. In fact, we can take a look at each of these layers individually. Let's make a variable called red and let's set it equal to image. We'll keep all of the rows, and we'll keep all of the columns of the image, but we'll keep only the first layer. Then we'll create a third figure, and in that figure 3, we will show just red. Now remember before we run this, we have to make sure that we close the live image from the camera. Here's the live image. 
and figure three, oh, well, let's put figures two and three next to each other. Figure two is the full color image. Figure three is just the red. Now, perhaps you expected this to look red, but anytime we reduce an image to have only one matrix, it converts it into a grayscale. So this grayscale image over here is showing us just the red value. You'll notice that the places that were white or gray in our original image stay white or gray in our red image. That's because in our original image, the red, green, and blue components were roughly equal. So when we convert a white value to a grayscale value by just keeping one color, it ends up being not changed. And this is also true of the parts of our original image that were black. These parts have zero red, zero green, and zero blue. So when we convert them to grayscale, they show zero red and they look black just like they did before. However, the red, green, and blue parts have changed. The blue circle has become black. That's because the blue circle has zero or almost zero red component. The green triangle also became black for the same reason. It has zero or very little red component. However, the red square has become much lighter than it was in the original image. That's because the red square has a very high red component. So when we keep just the red component, the red square shows up bright. Let's take a look at what the green and blue components look like. The green component of the image is just the second layer. I should say green. And let's take a look at the blue component also. Here's our original color image. And then when we look at figure three, that's the red image. So in this case, the red square showed up light. Figure four is the green image. So here, the green triangle showed up lighter, but you can see that the effect is not quite as strong as it was with the red square and figure five shows the blue component of the image, and again, the effect is much weaker. In general, your camera tends to be better at detecting red colors than it is detecting green and blue colors. One reason for this is because cameras generally have a range of vision that extends beyond the red wavelength and detects infrared as well. And so the range of wavelengths that it can pick up is better with red than it is with green and blue. Another reason for this is that green and blue are more similar and so there's less distinction between them. So let's take a look again at our image that shows the red component. Let's suppose that we would like to find the location of this red square. Right now, it would be difficult to do because the red square has pretty much blended into the background. Things that were white in the original image have stayed white in our new image. 
and things that were gray have stayed gray. Let's suppose that we want to get rid of everything that is not red and just keep the things that are red. I'd like to make everything that's white or gray turn to black instead of staying white or gray. Here's how we can do that. Instead of just showing the red image, we can do a grayscale conversion where we take the red image and subtract off the green and blue components. Let's create a variable called red only. And let's set that equal to the red image minus the blue image minus the green image. Note that the reason why we can do this is because each of these things, red, blue, and green, is a matrix. And you know that we can subtract matrices from each other, we can add them to each other, we can multiply matrices together. This is the fundamental mathematics that underlies all of our image processing. We have these matrices that represent images and we can perform mathematical operations on these matrices. The reason that this operation works to isolate red is because any colors that are white or gray have equal components of red, blue, and green. So when we take the red image and subtract off the blue and green images, each of the pixels that are white or gray will become dark. Now, in a grayscale conversion like the one I've shown here, red minus blue minus green, we will end up with pixels that are negative. MATLAB knows to convert those pixels that end up negative to zero, and so we don't have to do that on our own. If you were doing this kind of image processing on, say, a microcontroller, you might have to do that operation yourself to convert all negative values to zero. But here, we don't have to do that because MATLAB does it automatically. So let's create a new figure and show the red only image. I'm gonna make sure all of my figures are closed and then run this. Figure six is my red only image. You'll see that here we have the red square standing out and everything else that had a green or a blue component has turned dark. I can now use this image to find the location of the square. Let's take a look at what mathematically is in this image. I'm gonna type in red only and hit enter to see its matrix. You'll notice that the red only matrix consists mostly of zeros. Zeros, remember, are dark pixels. If we continue scrolling through this matrix, we'll eventually find the red square, which should show up as a non-zero group of pixels. There we go. Here are the pixels representing the red square. They're a small value because they're not that bright, but they're the only non-zero pixels in the whole matrix. 